Hey guys, welcome to my brand new podcast, Weekly Music Drop. I'm your host, Jaden Wong, aka Binkle Jaden. And, you know, this podcast is just about music, you know, mainly hip hop, rap, and R&B. Just like reviewing, rating, debating, talking about new albums that are, that have been put out, you know, discussing them. Music has always been like my favorite thing to do, like, you know, just listening, listening to music, making music, just like even talking about it. So, uh, the reason why I'm doing this, you know, music journalism is, is something that I would want to pursue in the future so that's why i am making this podcast but we have a lot to talk about so um since we're just getting started i'm just gonna be reviewing and rating almost every rap album that dropped out this year so far uh so yeah let's get to it to start off we got 21 savage american dream now to be honest i wasn't the biggest fan of this album no, I like I like the intro, All of Me. I think that was a good start. Red Rum, you know that song is going viral everywhere, you know. It's like very popular right now. I actually thought that song was kind of mid. Did grow on me a lot. Same thing with the next song, NHIE. I, at first, I wasn't really rocking with it. Then, I, as I like listened to it more, it was like, okay, now it's starting, now it's flowing, now it's growing on me a lot. Sneaky. Sneaky was actually pretty tough. Uh, I liked... The ad libs after each line was like, mm-hmm. I thought that that just like carried the whole song. Then pop your shit, you know, Young Thug. You know, I'm a really big Young Thug fan, so I really like this verse. I think Young Thug kind of carried that, and we could probably all agree. Twenty One Savage's chorus on pop your shit was not good, but Letter to My Brother that was actually that was good. I like Letter to My Brother. Don't we got all to say for that one? Dangerous. I like Dangerous. I I. Probably like top top five on this album, but I just like I thought Lil Durk could have been better. You know, I'm not a really big Lil Durk fan, so maybe I'm just being biased. But I know Nina Nina is definitely the best song on this album. You know, Travis Scott was the best feature on this whole album too. See the real I don't uh I don't I think I don't remember liking that song. I forgot what I, what I wrote down about See the real. Let me check. Yes, I I do not like see the real. Um, I don't remember that much though, so maybe I don't know. I'll I'll give another listen, see if that my opinion changes about it. But prove it, prove it's like my second best favorite song on this album. Summer Walker was like got me flo- floating, bro. Summer Walker was just amazing on that. Should have worn a bond on it. Same thing. Uh, Brent Fries' verse for like heaven. Just like me, I was not a fan of just like me. You know, I I thought Burner Boy did good. But I just didn't like it. Red Sky and Dark Days sound like the same thing. I honestly, honestly, it felt like Red Sky, just like, it's like Twenty One Savage trying to be like Drake. That, 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 that's all it was sound like. So, wasn't a big fan of this album. I thought the album was like kind of mid because Twenty One Savage just like had like the same flow the whole album, and there are some misses, some good songs. You know, it definitely had their ups and downs, but. I will give this album a seven out of ten. It was it was well, it wasn't wasn't too bad, not as good as I was expecting to be though. So yeah, that's it for American Dream. Next we got Kid Cudi's album Insano. Uh, dang, I was really disappointed actually because I'm not a Kid Cudi hater. You know I love Kid Cudi, Man Man on the Moon, and Man on the Moon Three is like one of my favorite albums ever, but. I ain't gonna lie, I am, I just did not like this album at all as a as as a Kid Cudi fan. I didn't like it. You know, often I had these dreams. It, it was a good intro. I when I heard the intro, I thought it was gonna be good, uh, but he bouncing all the way through like most Aiden Dennis was. I just like wasn't rock with it. Wow, was definitely one of the best songs on there. ASAP Rocky did his thing. Uh man, Electro Lay Baby. Tale of the Night, Cud Life. Cud Life was so bad. Cud Life was the worst song on the album, man. Um, it was bad. Too Damn High. Lil Yachty did this thing on that one. I, I, no, Lil Yachty never misses. Well, sometimes, but like, most of the time he never misses. Uh, what was after that? Get You Gone. That was actually, I was, that was alright. At the Party, man. I was, I was disappointed with that song. I, I was disappointed with At the Party. No, Travis Scott and Fred Williams. I thought that was going to be amazing. Uh, I was pretty disappointed. And then, Mr. Kula, through Tortured, Mid, just Mid songs. X and Cud, kind of overrated. Still a good song, though. 
Seven. Lil Wayne did his thing. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne's feature was tough. It was. It was. It was pretty good. Funky Wizard Smoke mid. Rager Boys Young. Rager Boys was like top top three. Top three. Yeah. Porch Topless was actually a good song. Blue Sky was definitely the best song on this album, without a doubt. You know, I think if uh, if Kid Cudi featured Post Malone, this would probably be like one of his best songs ever. So Blue Sky was amazing. And then the outro was kind of mid. So I did not like this album that much. Blue Sky, Wow, Rager Boys, and Seven were my favorite songs on this album. And uh, Too Damn High and, and uh, X and Cud was like, it's up there. But yeah, that's it for Insano. I don't know what happened to Kid Cudi because he just fell off. I don't know. Well, I hope he gets like, I hope he drops some good stuff soon. So yeah. Next, we got Lyrical Lemonade's All Is Yellow. Now, I didn't have a lot of big expectations for this album because before the album dropped, I'm pretty sure that he dropped Doomsday and Guitar In My Room. And I wasn't a fan of neither of those songs, though. Doomsday wasn't a fan of it. And I thought it was, like, too too, too lyrical. I don't know. It, it, Doomsday was just felt too lyrical to me. I, I don't really like it. Too more, more, like, more lyrics, less flow in it, you know? No, that, that, that might be, like, you know, you, that that's just my opinion. You guys might like you guys might like the lyrical stuff more, but I I, I just didn't like how it was like flowing really. Um, guitar in my room. Say, oh, man, it, little Dirk. I'm not a little Dirk fan. Y'all know that. And Kid Cudi, you know he hasn't been dropping that good music lately. But it wasn't even little Dirk that made that song bad. It was just, I think Kid Cudi kind of ruined it. But the intro "Fly Away" was amazing. Oh my God, Sheck West, Ski Mask, and Jid. Jid popped off. I don't know what he was on, but he just went stupid. You know, uh, Say Your Grace. Say Your Grace is all right. That song's all right. This is My Life. I was actually impressed with this album, with this song, This is My Life, because Lil Tecca, Kid Lil... Because I haven't heard a lot from the Kid Leroy and Lil Skies lately, so I was, I was, I was actually, like, pretty, pretty, you know, exceed the expectations. Uh, I'm a big Tito Touchdown fan, but that song First Night was not it. I, I was not uh, I was I was really a fan of that. Because I'm actually a Lotto fan. I, I like Lotto. I think she's a good, very talented rapper. Amine, I'm not really a fan of Amine, but he was alright. Sway Lee too. With the fish. Oh my <sighs> that I was disappointed. I thought Snot was gonna pop off, but it just sounded way with the fish sound like it didn't even sound like a Snot song. I don't know what it was. You know, I talk about Doomsday. Doomsday Part 2, that was actually my favorite song on this album, the one with Eminem. Fallout, Fallout was good. Lo y'all, you did this thing on that one. Equilibrium. I, man, I, like, I, I did not like Equilibrium, I don't know. Man, Baby Tron, I'm not a Baby Tron fan. I like G Herbo, though. I thought G Herbo would be good. I just, I didn't like how they kept saying, like, aim it as equal. I, I didn't like that. I was a fan of that song. Hello There was definitely not a fan of that song. I don't know, because I... I mean, I said I only listened to, like, hip-hop and R&B. So that, it was, like, way out of my genre. I just didn't like it. Hummingbird, Tizo Touchdown redeemed himself with the Hummingbird because that song was actually really good. Stop giving me advice. I was I was impressed. I was impressed because I'm not... Because uh, I was impressed with Stop Giving Me Advice because Jack Harlow finally had a good song without a sample. So, um, and Dave, I'm, I, I, I like Dave. Dave is... I'm, I'm a pretty big Dave fan, so... Yeah, but none of the none of these songs like stood out to me at all. You know what I mean, none of them like ten out of ten, you know. So, but I still think this album is better than um, Insano, but not better than Nitro Mega. But we're gonna talk about Nitro Mega later. So that's it for All Is Yellow. All right, I am very excited to talk about this album, this next one, because I'm the biggest one of the biggest Kanye fans ever, and we're gonna talk about Vultures One, my favorite album this year so far um i will definitely be reviewing vultures 2 next week on march 8th with uh probably with a special guest uh with, with my boy so we're definitely going to be like reviewing that next week um anyways to start off stars and keys to my life this is a amazing intro uh i like how it changes from stars and keys to my life you know and then kanye just kept that thing flowing pause and then paid Pay, I thought I thought Pay was overhated. No, I thought like Kanye's verse was like, be like, Kanye's verse was like slept on. 
you know, even though he was, he did sound crazy and paid. I, I actually liked it. I liked it. Talking, just you know, Northwest is that Northwest is so talented. I'm not even, I'm not being, I'm not being glazed right now. Northwest is actually so talented, bro. Talking was good. I thought I, I liked that. Back to me. Okay, if I'm gonna be honest with y'all, the reason I, I, I love this album, but it's still probably Kanye's second worst album, and two reasons: the track listing, the order of, of the tracks on this album, is terrible. I hate it. And then it's this is probably like his worst lyrical. Okay, like I, I just said, I don't like like lyrical songs, like flows and, and like all this yellow review, but like still. <laughs> This is probably Kanye's worst uh, album lyric wise. You no, know, if you pay attention, you no know, back, you no know, back to me. Kanye just said like the same thing <laughs> uh, the whole time. You know, I, I'm not gonna repeat it. You guys already know. Freddie Gibbs, his verse was amazing. Hood Rat, Hood Rat had to grow on me. You know, it, it's still a good song. Um, paperwork, I like I like paperwork. Do it, oh yeah, do it, do it. Uh, was one of my favorite songs on the album. I, I like the um. Uh, that back that, that ass up uh, sample. Why you use the good paperwork? I like paperwork. I like Quavo's part. You know, burn. Oh my God, burn's my second favorite uh song on this album. On because it did remind me of like graduation and college dropout Kanye, which I haven't heard in a while. So I love that. Uh, F some. I thought this album was. I thought F some was overrated. To be honest with you, because like. Yeah, probably Cardi and Travis Scott did good on that, but Kanye's verse was trash, to be honest. And I don't know what they were doing with that album, the Chipmunks thing, because <laughs> I didn't like that. Vultures, I think Vultures was over, Vultures is overhated too. You no, know, you, you you gotta like listen to Vultures like a, like at least like ten times. It's like it, it, it's catchy. You know, it, I I I think Vultures was pretty underrated. I I like that one, especially well, Lil Durk. The song uh, with Lil Durk's version was definitely better than the original one. So, next, the best song on this album, you already know, Carnival. Uh, Rich the Kid played Carly. I don't even got to explain this one. This is just amazing. The sample, the instrumental, played by Carly is, oh my god, the whole song Carnival is amazing. Beg Forgiveness, this is my third favorite song on the album. You know, before I was like, eh, then it, had to, then it grew on me a lot. Man, I don't know why they took off "Good Don't Die" because that was actually one of my favorite songs on the album before they took it off. That that would have been like top three, but since they took it off, that's uh, I can't really re review that now. But "Problematic" was so the instrumental. The "Problematic" was amazing. Oh my god! Like I could just like I don't even care about, about like the lyrics or anything. I could just listen. They could just drop the whole instrumental, the "Problematic," and I'd still listen to it like all day. King. Hey, King King, that that was a really good outro. Except the legs were kind of, kind of questionable, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this album was really good. No skips, no misses on this album at all. Uh, but like I said earlier, the track listing was not good. Lyrics weren't good. So yeah, that's that's why even though I give this album an eight point five out of ten, it's still probably Kanye's second worst album behind Ye. So uh, yeah, that's it for. Vultures. Next, we got Yeet 2093 slash 2093 Faith 2. Wow, this album actually blew me away. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, still not better than Vultures 1, but it was still a really good album. The production on this album was amazing. You know, uh, production on Yeet albums, they never fail. Uh, the intro, Psycho CEO, it was, to start off, that was a good intro. Then followed by Power Trip, which is my favorite song on that album. And then Breathe. Uh, Breathe had to grow. Breathe had to grow on me a little bit. I don't know how that would, <laughs> Breathe somehow was charted number one on Apple Music, even though that's definitely not the best song on the album at all. But more, more is like top actually nah. More is like probably like honorable mention. It, it, it's not top five, but it's a really good song. Bought the Earth. That's my second favorite song on the album, and then nothing changed. It's like my third favorite. So they had they had a bunch of hits on this. Uh, then wait, what was what was after nothing? Oh yeah. In phase two, there was as we speak featuring Drake. 
Drake does get back from. Uh, I don't give a fuck. But Ye, you no, know, in IDGAF, Ye carry Drake, and as we speak, Drake carry Ye. So Drake does get back. I feel like I think the other song Never Quit. I I like Never Quit better than As We Speak. I feel like As We Speak was dragged out for too long. But yeah, Drake definitely did this thing on that. Uh, you should know. Uh, that, that song was alright. Uh, it wasn't like insanely good. It wasn't like bad either. But Lifestyle, Lil Wayne's verse was insane. He just popped off in that album, in that song. I love, I love the Grow Me a lot too. I like that. Tell me, and then just from like Tell Me to all the way through like 2093, were just like all mid songs. Team CEO in 2093. For like one of the worst songs on the album though, stand on it, stand on it. That 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 was like probably like that one of my favorite songs on the album too. Future we did amazing, Familia one of my favorite songs. This in between it pretty good. I I like the one. Psycho Kane Run It Mouth If We Being Real Ten Ninety Three those those are all just like mid kind of Ten Ninety Three that was also like one of my least favorite songs on the album. I did not like that outro at all, but. And that I still gave this album like an eight out of ten, cause you know the production is amazing. This it just felt like, it it felt like trap Yeezus. You know it felt like Yeet's version of Yeezus. It was experimental. You know definitely does not sound like up to me. Does not sound like old Yeet, but it's still one hundred percent better than Afterlife and Sue Alive. Not better than a Geek Pack though, but yeah that's it for twenty ninety three. All right, this next one I'm not gonna talk. A whole lot about is Mac and Cheese Five. Now y'all know he French Montana dropped like ten different versions of this album, and I don't know why he didn't drop the features only uh, version to this album, cause literally all the solos on this album sucked. You know French Montana is not a good rapper, so he got carried by the features and, like every single one of them. Kanye West Side Gun Jid. My favorite song on this album was Where They At, featuring Kanye and West Side Gun. Uh, but that's really it for this album. I, I, I just, it's, it, it, come on, it, it's, it's, French, it's French Montana. I'm like, what do you expect? <laughs> Next, we got Insano, Nitro, Mega. I don't know why this wasn't just the original Insano, because it was a lot better than the original one. But this was basically just like a lost track, lost files version. But yeah, I did think this was better than All Is Yellow. Still, it's still not better than American Dream though. But the intro, I wasn't really a big fan of the intro. But then Diamond Lights, Fast Cars, all the way to like Chunky, those are all like really good songs. I love those songs. Baby, when I was alright, Willis was ugh, I did not like Willis at all. Crash Test Cuddy was tough. Everybody like was tough. Electro Way Baby 2.0 was tough. Anime was to oh my there was just like so many good songs on this album too. Dose of Dopeness was amazing, Rocket was amazing. All oh, Why I Bleed, All My Life, I just want to get. Uh, Superboy was all right, you know. This this was actually a really pretty good album, you know. This is I I think that this is actually a good Kid Cudi album, definitely better than the Sano. I don't know why he just didn't make this the original one, but yeah, I gave this one seven point five out of ten. Good job, Cud. Alright, the last two albums we're going to be talking about today are Blue Lips and Hedonism. You know, Schoolboy Q, Blue Lips, and Meek Mill's Hedonism. So, Blue Lips is actually like my second favorite album this year behind Vultures 1. Uh, to start it off, good, good intro. It was alright, good intro. Pop was definitely like the best song on this album for sure. Uh, I loved uh, Pop. Rico Nasty popped off. Uh, no pun intended. Thank God for me was really good. Blue Sides, Yearn, 101, Lovebirds, Movie, just like every song in this album was like amazing. Ohio, Freddie Gibbs, Dist Academics, Fox Reach and Absol, First, these were all like really good songs. New New was probably the worst song on this album. It's not even a bad, it's not even a bad song. It's just like, you know, it's like so many hits on this album. Back in Love, Lost Times, Germ- Germany 86, this is like top five time killers. Pig Feet, definitely top two, and an amazing outro with Smile. Pop and Pig Feet are easily the two best songs on this album, and it's not even close. Uh, I like third? 
I, I, I liked, I like folks first, Journey eighty six. So those are my, those are my top five. But I gave, uh, I'll give Blue Lips an eight out of ten. Lastly, we got Meek Mill's EP slash album, Heathenism. Started off, came from the bottom. This is actually a pretty good intro and a good, a good start. Times like this, the follow up, whatever I like. And then Big Boy and Gavin Chanel. Big Boy and Gavin Chanel were the two best songs on this album. You know, Future did amazing. Future did amazing on the on the song. Big Boy was Big Boy. I was blown away by that song. Uh, but think I think like the, the, this album was like lacking. Like this album was like kind of lacking audio quality, and the overall flow was just a little bit like disjointed. You know, so definitely not Meek Mill's best as expected but it's still a good album nonetheless 7.5 out of 10 uh i put this i put the album above american dream and behind 2093 so yeah it's still still pretty good all right now i'm going to be ranking all of those nine albums that i just rated uh from worst to best starting with the worst one french montana mac and cheese five pretty self-explanatory you know and number eight kid cuddies insano Seven lyrical lemonade all is yellow. Six kid Cudi and Sano Nitro Omega. Five twenty one Savage American Dream. Four Meek Mill Hedonism. Three Yeet twenty ninety three. Two Schoolboy Q Blue Lips and number one Kanye West Vultures one. Hopefully Vultures two is gonna be better than Vultures one. I mean if if they uh put Rivers the song with the Young Thug on Vultures two because I which I pray they do. Cause I'm looking really, f- I'm really looking forward to see Young Thug and Kanye West song together. So yeah, definitely we'll be reviewing uh, Vultures Two next week. Plan to have this podcast in the future though. I'm trying to like uh make and like publish or post a podcast once every Sunday, depending on how music is looking like. No, obviously, if there isn't, like, any, like, good albums to review, I'm not going to, like, review it or anything like that. But my goal is to post a podcast once every Sunday. That's my goal. Can't promise that, but, yeah. So, hope you enjoyed. And next episode, probably going to be on Vultures 2. So, get ready for that. All right. See you.